What I said back then is what I say today, and I quote uh, Robert Frost, always fall into what you've asked to accept. Take what is given, but make it your own way. And that's what I've tried to do in my life. My aim in life has always been to hold my own. I am really excited to have Steve Caliper here today. If you think of entrepreneurship, and you think of a successful business person, you think of Steve Caliper. In 1973, as business manager for Coleman Oldsmobile, located in Trenton, New Jersey, he started his, his career in the automotive industry. Three years later, he acquired the Deachman Ford Lincoln Mercury dealership, letting him move into its present location in Flemington. And you just can't drive in Flemington without knowing about Steve Califer. He is uh, not only an amazing business person, he is also uh, the longtime love of baseball, becoming the chairman of the Sunset Patriots. He's also had a movie career. He's had three award Academy Award nominations for uh, films he's produced. He is an, a philo philanthropist. He's involved in Somerset. Uh, to the extent that he is, you can't walk down the street and not know Steve. We are thrilled to get Steve here. Steve, thank you. Come on up, please. I'm very happy to be here, and thank you very much for the opportunity. Uh, and I promise to be short because I am, but uh, I also promise to do a couple of uh, commercials. You know, I've been here before. Uh, it's like the movie Groundhog Day. <laughs> I've been here before. I really, I'm going to take two minutes to introduce uh, myself from a standpoint of I was here. I'm actually going to be, I went through all my remarks and words and I said, okay, what am I going to come up with new, original, and what is earth changing? And uh, at 66 years old, I realized that the only thing that changes is my hairline and my waist. <laughs> Something to look forward to, Aubrey. So. So uh, what, what I thought I'd do is, so this is 2007. It's 2007, so let's go back to August of 2007 and think where we were or where we could even imagine we would go. So I said, I, I have this canned line. I've been nominated for three Academy Awards, I've never won. So what I do is I take something out of my top pocket, because this is what they do when you win an Academy Award, and I wouldn't know about winning it because I've lost three times, but always I see the person take something out, and the first thing is, what do they say? What do they say? I want to thank the Academy. So anytime I can say that, even if I'm not at the Oscars, I do want to say, I want to thank the Academy. So. Uh, also, just because I want to keep it consistent. The next line that I said in 2007 was, we're having a sale at Flemington Car and Truck Country. <laughs> and we still are having a sale. And going through uh, the, the, uh, uh, the little uh, pre-luncheon uh, 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 reception, everything is about selling something to somebody. It's not just about selling for a profit. I, I, I was at a nonprofit uh, 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 fest uh, uh, about a month ago, and I keep hearing the word not for profit, not for profit. And I challenged all of these directors and executive heads, and, and Anna, you know what this is about. Anna's a, an old friend. There is profit in everything. Nothing happens unless there's a profit or somebody profits by it. So I challenge the, the heads of the nonprofits. Your profit is the value you add to your constituents. Because if you're not adding that profit to them, you have no value. And in entrepreneurship, unless you add value and add profit, good word, profit. Let's all say profit together three times. One, profit. Second, profit. Third, profit. And if you add value to that, then you will have done a very good thing for everybody. So anyway, what I said back then is what I say today, and I quote uh, Robert Frost, always fall into what you've asked to accept. Take what is given, but make it your own way. And that's what I've tried to do in my life. My aim in life has always been to hold my own. Let me give you a couple of examples. I plan today, because I do plan, to have a day at Flemington Car and Truck Country speaking with customers and selling cars, and remember we're having a sale, right? <laughs> but not preparing for the Princeton Regional Chamber of Commerce monthly luncheon this afternoon. My good friend, uh, Jack Miller, called me up and said, uh, Steve, do you think you'd like to uh, speak before the, uh, uh, the chamber? I said, uh, yeah, okay, just uh, call Ellen, and w w whatever it is. 
He didn't tell me it was 10 days later. So, <laughs> so, and he didn't tell me who said they'd show and didn't. So anyway, so, but it, it really goes to a few things have really ever happened in my life as I planned. Let me start with my high school years. This is two minutes, so don't, don't worry when I'm starting my high school years. <laughs> I graduated from West Essex High School in 1967. I had planned to go to college. I didn't work as hard as I should have, and I ended up at a junior college that was located over a Chinese restaurant and a candy store in downtown Washington, DC. I realized I hadn't really worked hard enough and I hadn't chosen as well as I should have when in the entire freshman class, I was the only one that was not in the remedial English program, and I was in the honors program. The only one. They had to give it to somebody. The school, ta the school cafeteria in 1967 consisted solely of a new invention known as a microwave oven. And it had vending machines too, and I adjusted to all of it. I then later uh, transferred and graduated from Ryder University, then Ryder College, and I had planned to graduate. I mean, you used to go four years to college back in those days. But by the way, I will tell you both of my children, four years. I uh, planned to graduate from Ryder in the spring of 71. However, I failed a science course in my last senior semester, and I couldn't graduate with my class. I did fulfill the science requirement that summer, but only after I married Suzanne, and had to come back from a three-day honeymoon because summer school was starting. So can you imagine, uh, uh, can you imagine going on a field trip with, with your wife who's picking up rocks in an earth science class? 